Okay, hey everybody, welcome. My name is Rashida and I know you all are here for one reason and one reason only. You all want to know how to start your own content studio. So I have put together this quick video, uh, well not too quick, but this video to be able to help you um, answer the questions that I have been getting flooded on TikTok about um, as far as the content studio goes. So hopefully by now you have downloaded that ebook because that's gonna give you the outline of what you need to do as far as the business credit goes to be able to get the funding that you need to be able to open your studio. So I'm going to teach you in this video how to utilize the business credit tips that I outlined in the ebook to get you up and running and being able to launch your content studio in your area in no time. Now, as mentioned in the ebook, you wanna make sure you have all your legalization in place before you even decide to open a content content studio, especially if you're renting or leasing a retail space or even a warehouse. So once you have received all of your approvals from the Secretary of State, IRS, or whatever it is, you then can go ahead and begin your search. So first things first of finding a location. Um, so there are several different websites you can utilize to be able to find a location for your content studio. LoopNet is one of the most utilized websites that business owners and entrepreneurs use to find commercial real estate. And also another awesome website is called City Feed. I'll make sure to have these all linked down below so that you can easily access them to go ahead and start your search, okay? If you have any issues finding a location, don't be afraid to ask a realtor for help. Um, I personally did not have a realtor because the space is literally right next door to my warehouse. So it was pretty much a situation where the studio fell in my lap. So a realtor can not only make the process smoother and simpler for you, but they can also negotiate the price and lease terms on your behalf. So location, you want to steer away from buildings that have a lot of small rooms. To be able to open my space was because I had to hire a contractor to be able to knock down the walls and get rid of the debris. So that was the only out-of-pocket expense that I incurred. I also want you to understand that when you find these spaces with these small rooms, they're no longer called content studios. They're then called selfie museums. And when videographers and photographers come in, usually they'll bring their own equipment in and it's it's a lot of equipment. So those small spaces make it hard for the videographers and the photographers to be able to utilize the equipment they want to. So the best thing to do is to find a big open space that the videographers, content creators, photographers can be able to really utilize and maximize the space that you have available, okay? So another question that I always get is that, what size is my content studio? My studio is 800 square feet, but it's a big open space, okay? So they can spread out their equipment. They have a lot of lights. A lot of the videographers and photographers that rent my studio, they bring their own equipment and they maximize this whole space. So it'll fill up this space. So you do not want to have those small rooms. Again, it's called a selfie museum when you start to do that. If you go on Peer Space or go on another platform that you can find content studios, you'll see that a lot of those content studios are not small rooms. They're large enough spaces for people to be able to move around freely, walk around and do that and do things like that. So like for example, for a boutique, Anyone that's modeling clothes, they need to be able to walk around, turn around and do things so that they can show off the clothes that they have, right? Same thing I do with my dress brand. I have to be able to move around. So having small rooms will not be able to work for me. So when it comes to designing your space, once you have found a space that's nice and open, you know, you want to make one wall, the focal point. So, and that focal point wall should always be white. Now it's okay to add panels. I have panels on my wall, but you wanna make sure that that wall is able to be used for multi-purposes. Having a bunch of different color walls on every single wall will make it hard for a creator to be able to utilize the space at its full potential, okay? So I suggest having the main wall, the focal point wall. And the main wall would be the longest wall in your studio. So for example, my longest wall is white, which makes, makes my, white wall, the focal point of my content studio. My smallest wall is black because I do have a small audience of guys who like to come in and utilize the content studio. So since that particular audience is small, I'm going to make sure that black wall is small. Not a lot of women want to use a black wall. That's more so a guy thing. So the next longest wall that I have next to my white wall is this beautiful pink wall with gold trimming that you can see behind me because the largest audience I have is 
females who love pink. And again, it goes back to the large white focal wall. Men and women can use that wall at any time. And if a guy wants to use black wall, cause you know they like to do the cinematic effect, that black wall is perfect for that. So you wanna make sure you keep in mind the creator and how they may wanna use the space to be able to determine the type of wall that you have in your studio. If you have issues coming up with designs for your studio or don't know what color to paint a wall, y'all utilize Pinterest. Like if you get a creator's block or, and you can't think of how am I going to design a space? I don't know exactly what space should I paint this wall? Utilize Pinterest. If you want a purple wall, go on Pinterest app and type in purple wall design and decor. Pinterest will pull up all type of designs and ideas for you to be able to use. So utilize what you have to get what you want. Pinterest was amazing for me. Um, and the only, I use Pinterest to design my black wall, but when it comes to design, I love interior design. So I was able to bring the colors together and do contrast. But if you are not familiar in the area, or if you aren't an expertise in interior design, use Pinterest, go to furniture stores, see how their um, spaces are set up in the furniture store. It's different ways you'll be able to come up with the idea, but you have to put yourself in a creator's shoes. You become the content creator and see what exactly it is that you would want to see in a content studio. I suggest go to other content studios, book their spaces for two hours and see exactly what it is that they do. And another tip is you go there, you see what they are not offering but you offer it in your studio that makes you stand out from your competition so let's talk about deposits and pricing because that was a big thing that a lot of people ask me as well in TikTok. so if you're afraid of having your items damaged it's okay to do a deposit a good deposit amount would be between 75 and 100 dollars. it is a good idea to allow the deposit to go towards the booking myself in particular I do deposits, but I require the full amount of the booking due at the time of booking. So when they book, they have to pay for their full session. I don't allow them to um, pay half for their session and then pay the other half prior to getting to the studio. They have to pay the full amount of the session plus the deposit. And once I've done the walkthrough and things like that, that amount, that $75 will be refunded as soon as that walkthrough is complete, which will most likely be that same day. And again, y'all keep in mind, these are content creators, business owners, and entrepreneurs. They're not going to purposely damage anything in your studio. Yes, accidents happen, but they're not going to come damaged because they don't want their reputation ruined. Y'all know how social media is. Is. people will go online and bash you so they do take care of your stuff I have had no issues I didn't even have to really clean up behind anybody because they want to continue to use this space and they don't want to be bashed they don't want to have bad reviews because when you book through that platform on Peerspace they have a profile too and you can like tell people or go on Peerspace say this was a bad um, creator that came into my space so keep in mind they will take care of it I have not had any issues um, with someone renting my space and damaging anything so when it comes to pricing that it all depends on the area that you're in I'm the only content studio in my area so I can easily charge upward between a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars per hour but again I have to understand who my audience is and where I live I'm in a small town so fifty to sixty dollars per hour is a really good price for the creators in my area also keep in mind you do never want you never want to be able to have the creator only book for an hour you always do a minimum of two hours and especially since my booking is only fifty dollars an hour i require a minimum of two hours there's nothing that you can do in this content studio for only an hour you're probably just coming to only be nosy so i always have them schedule at least two hour minimum. So what does that mean? I get a hundred dollars guaranteed every time somebody books, whether they're booking for two hours, three hours or whatever it is, you always want to make sure they have a two hour minimum. And that's with every content studio. Um, I haven't come across, I haven't come across a studio that, that don't require less than two hours. Um, another big question that I got was um, the equipment. So when it comes to equipment that's being offered in a content studio, I personally think and feel like this is a, is a given that 
all equipment should be included in the studio. But again, that's at your own discretion. This is your content studio. You do what you feel. But as far as lighting, um, tripods, a ring light, that stuff should be included in the content studio. A content studio is supposed to make it easier for a content creator to come in and do what it is that they need to do and leave. Now, when it comes to a bigger investment, as far as a camera goes, like I'm recording on a Sony a7 IV. This camera cost me $3,000. There is no way I'm going to rent or leave this camera in this studio for somebody to utilize. Number one, they don't even know how to use the camera. I don't like people usually just record on their phone. So lights um, and tripods would be more than enough for a creator to be able to use and get what it is that they need out of the studio. But if you do want to rent out your expensive camera, you better make sure you charge a different hourly price for that equipment and also a different deposit for that equipment because in the event that that camera breaks, okay, you got a big, huge piece of change that you got to come out of pocket for. So I would definitely suggest you charge a different deposit amount and a different hourly price um, separate from the session price. This, so this is the big argument about um, content studios, whether it's passive income or not. So we can go back and forth all day about whether it's passive income or whatever the case may be, but a content studio is definitely passive income. I do not market. I only use a platform to be able to get my content studio visible to other people. I do not have to come in every day to babysit anybody. I don't have to let anybody in. I don't have to let anybody out. Again, like I said, these are adult content creators photographers and videographers they're business owners they don't want the reputation ruined they're they clean up after they self every single time it does not matter I have never had an issue with it so the system that I use to keep my business on autopilot is using a keyless entry lockbox so I'll leave the link down in the description for you to be able to purchase it it's on Amazon and what happens is if a content creator um, photographer or whoever comes and wants to book a session for 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. I allow them to access my studio five minutes prior. That way they can come in, go ahead and get set up and then the session will begin. So if they booked at 3 p.m., they'll be able to access the keypad at 2.55. So what happens is when they book, they'll automatically get sent a keyless entry um, and type in the pin code, access the studio, and then once they leave at 7 p.m., the keypad will immediately um, disable so that they won't be able to get back in and it'll lock a mat automatically after they leave. So it's definitely autopilot. I don't have to do anything when it comes to my content studio. The only time my content studio does get messed up is when I'm in it. I mess it up. Like I really get in here and create as much content as I possibly can. And I encourage all of the creators that come in here to move furniture as much as they want to, to, the, to, um, fit their aesthetic. As far as surveillance goes, I do have a ring doorbell in the entryway and also a camera on the back door. Um, but as far as having a camera inside of the studio, I personally do not do it um, simply because this is a private session. Nobody wants to have the feeling of being watched and sometimes people come in here and get comfortable and they change their clothes inside of the studio. Although I do have a beauty room where there is a dressing room and also a clothes rack, sometimes they want to do a quick change inside the studio. So having the camera here is just a little creepy to me. So, but again, it's your content studio that you're going to open. If you want to have a, con um, a surveillance camera inside the studio, that's completely up to you, of course, but just don't have it in the dressing room, okay? But it, if it is a larger area, maybe it does make sense to have um, surveillance. But like I said, this is 800 square feet. I can literally see everything, I can see everybody that's coming in, I can see everybody going out, um, and also at the back door. So the most asked question that I got was what was the startup cost for starting a content studio? How am I be able to afford this thing? You got this content studio. I can't do it because I don't have the money. Believe it or not, y'all, my content studio only cost me twelve to thirteen hundred dollars out of pocket to be able to open and launch. So here's how I utilize the business credit. So, but first, make sure you go follow the ebook to do the exact same net thirty accounts and net sixty accounts that I use to be able to go ahead and start it. So here's a breakdown of my expenses: my eight hundred square feet retail 
space cost me $600 a month to rent. Plus my utility costs me between $120 to $150 extra per month. So the total cost with my rent included is about $720 to $750 a month overhead that I have to be able to um, continuously run my content studio. So when I first started my content studio, um, like I said, it was a study hall of six rooms. I hired a contractor to come in and knock the walls down, do demolition, got it out. That was $1,200. Um, I needed to rewire a couple of wires to be able to have um, outlets on a bunch of different walls because depending on where the creator is, they want to be able to easily have access to an outlet. So I have outlets all over the place. Um, so my um, electrician cost me about $200. So with my Home Depot business credit card, the materials I needed to be able to put the studio together ran me about 2000. And that's the panels, um, the, they're not two by fours, the, the little wood sticks, all of these um, back here the floors, um, everything, all the materials cost me $2,000 exactly um, to be able to renovate the place. Um, so every piece of furniture that's in my content studio cost me $2,000. Now, I began renting my studio out immediately. So let me back up. Um, Home Depot gave me a credit line of $5,500. I only used $2,000 of it. Wayfair um, extended me credit of $2,500. I only used $2,000 of it. So I knew in order for me to make my rent every month, make my utilities every month and be able to pay back those credit cards so that I did not come out of the pocket, come out of pocket. I knew I wouldn't have needed to be able to um, make at least $2,000 for the next two to three months. And believe it or not, it was so easy for me because people weren't coming in renting just two hours. They were renting for the whole day. That was an immediate $400 for me. So I know for me to be able to make my rent, I would have had to have at least eight bookings, okay? I need eight bookings a month to be able to pay rent and also to pay utilities. So for the first two months, I was able to actually make my rent. The first month I was able to pay um, Home Depot back. And then the second month I was able to make my rent, pay my utilities and then pay Wayfair back. No, I'm sorry, I did it the other way. I paid Wayfair back first and then I paid Home Depot back. And here's why. Um, Home Depot was a revolving credit card that I had gotten. Wayfair, was a net 60 account. So I wanted to be able to pay back that net 60 account before I paid a revolving account. Because of course, the revolving account, you could pay over time. But the longer you stretch out those payments, the more interest you'll incur. So I wanted to go ahead and get it out the way. Now, I did have a, a Home Depot card with a net 60 account. So I have the net 60 and I have the revolving. But I did not know um, that the studio would be this easy to run. So I said, well, maybe I should just use my revolving account so I'll be able to just pay it over time. Because when I initially started this content studio, it was just for me to be able to create my own content because I continuously had to outsource my content to Atlanta. Cause again, we didn't have one here. So I had to outsource it to Atlanta to a couple of ladies to go rent out the content studio with rent, which ran me $600 every single time plus i had to pay for them then i had to pay for shipping to get all the uh, the clothes and the shoes for them to do content for me um and also for them to be able to post so i was getting charged a lot every single month for consistent content so as a business owner if there's a problem in your area as a business owner you should be able to solve it and that's exactly what i did so not only did i solve it i'm making um, income out of it, passive, easy income. A content studio is easy money. I don't care what anybody says, don't argue with me, okay? It's passive income. Open a content studio sounds harder than what it really is. So if you have the connection or you know somebody who's really good with their hands um, and creativity, a family member, a friend, y'all have a paint party. Get in here and do, get in here and do it together. It took me two months to put this content studio together because I did it myself. But if you have family or friends who's willing to help, y'all get together and, and you, you definitely can put it off. It's not as hard 
as it may look. It's just a little tedious. And it took me long because like I said, I was by myself. Um, I did have sleepless nights, frustrated, crying because I'm like, I have to get this thing going. Like I dedicated to it and I got, I had to keep it pushing and keep it going. So most importantly, you have to have fun with it. Okay. So I wish y'all the best of luck in opening a content studio. Take your time with it. Make sure you fully do your research um, of the type of buildings that you get. Don't go out and get a building that's between that's five thousand dollars a month because then you're gonna have to start charging six hundred dollars like the one in Atlanta that I had to use for a content studio. But if that's the market in your area, you do what's best for you in your area. So again, do your research and and look up other content studios in your area. Make sure you do the proper research. I can't express that enough. And the, the same tip I'm gonna give to you again, whatever the content studio in your area is not offering, it needs to be in yours. That will make you stand out from the competition. So I hope this video helps. If you have any additional comments, please, or questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll respond as quickly as I can. And I thank y'all so much for all the love and support on that YouTube video. I did not expect it to go crazy the way it did. And I will see y'all in y'all content studio. Bye.